Hey guys, hope you're well. So I ran a poll asking you guys how old your phone is and 75% of you said your phone was two years old or newer. Now I also normally upgrade my phone every two years or so and to be honest I'm never blown away by the improvements. But today we're going back further than that, all the way back to 2013. The year the word selfie was added to the dictionary and the year we learned that a Pope could actually be cool, and the year the Sony Xperia Z was launched, which was at the time a flagship phone. This is the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, and I've had it for a couple of months now, and it is also a flagship phone. So we're going to compare these two to see how far we've really come. Has innovation slowed down? Have we stagnated in the last few years? Or are we still churning out better and better phones every year? Let's find out. Starting with design, the Xperia Z was a large phone at its time of release. In fact, I remember some were complaining that it was hard to operate with just one hand. Which does feel funny, considering the S21 Ultra completely dwarfs it in both size and weight. In fact, the S21 Ultra is over 70% heavier than the Xperia Z, and that's a lot, and you do feel the difference, and if I'm completely honest, I prefer holding the Xperia Z. Aside from dimensions, the two phones are quite different. So the S21 Ultra has a sophisticated camera system with four different lenses. So that's an ultra wide camera, a main wide camera, a three times telephoto zoom camera, and a 10 times telephoto zoom camera. In comparison, the Xperia Z has to make do with its single 13.1 megapixel sensor. On the other hand, the Xperia Z actually wins when it comes to available ports. It has a headphone jack, which was very common amongst phones of the time, and it also has a micro SD card expansion slot, which was, again, a common feature at the time on Android phones. The S21 Ultra has neither of these things. However, neither phones come with removable batteries. Now, that was still common back in 2013, but the Xperia Z was one of the first waterproof and dustproof phones, and as such, it has an integrated battery, just like the S21 Ultra. Now the battery in the S21 Ultra is more than double the size of the one found in the Xperia Z, and it's a good thing too, because there is a lot of power under the hood. The 6.8 inch Quad HD AMOLED display on the S21 Ultra completely destroys the 1080p TFT display on the Xperia Z in every possible way. It's higher resolution, it has 120Hz refresh rate, it gets much brighter, it has better viewing angles, better colors, better black levels, and it supports HDR. So we have come a long way when it comes to display technology. Performance was kind of tricky to compare because it's actually difficult to find a test that both phones could run since the Xperia Z is stuck running on Android 5.1 Jelly Bean. However, I did find that 3DMark had a test called Slingshot that both phones could run and that will test both the CPU and GPU performance. So. Let the test begin. So, as you can see, the S21 Ultra maxed out the test, which means it's actually too powerful to get a score. That being said, the lowest frame rate was 19 and the highest was 88. In comparison, the Xperia Z struggled its way through the test, having a lowest frame rate of 1 and highest of 20. Anyway, I wasn't quite satisfied with this result, so I downloaded one more test called CPU Prime Benchmark. And after running it on both devices, here are the scores. As you can see, the S21 Ultra achieves a score almost 10 times higher than that of the Xperia Z, which in itself was a powerful device at the time. So I'm happy to conclude that we have also come a long way when it comes to performance. Next up is camera performance. So in order to test this, I went out with both phones and took a variety of pictures and videos. The short scoop is this. The S21 Ultra destroys the Xperia Z in every quantifiable objective way. The images it takes are sharper, higher resolution, have better dynamic range, better light sensitivity, faster focusing and exposure, faster shutter speed, and you get the idea. It's a giant leap 
forward. That said, the Xperia Z has a certain artistic charm to it. It almost reminds me of film photography. Every now and again, the Xperia Z would take a picture that I actually preferred over the one the S21 Ultra took. Not in any measurable or objective way, it's just that sometimes I feel like it did a better job at capturing what I wanted to remember the scene being like. High dynamic range and image processing have become so good that it can actually take away from the scene or the setting that you're trying to capture. Does that make sense guys? Let me know down below in the comments what you think. But most of the time, the Xperia Z just can't keep up. It's slow to focus, so many images end up blurry, and it can't handle low-lit situations at all, so many of my images ended up horribly underexposed in the shadows. The selfie camera is not even comparable. The Xperia Z takes horrible, grainy selfies with badly produced colors, whilst the S21 Ultra captures so much more detail. Video is again S21 Ultra all the way. Just look at this footage of me walking slowly. Image stabilization really has come a long way. Now, so far I've only been showing you the main camera on the S21 Ultra because the Xperia Z doesn't have any other cameras to compare with. And that is another huge leap forward we've made in the past few years. Having these extra cameras gives us so much more flexibility depending on what we want to capture. The ultra wide lens does a fantastic job of covering landscape photography, whilst the telephoto cameras let you get closer without actually getting closer. Audio is an area where I don't think we've come particularly far. I mean, sure, the speaker on the S21 Ultra does sound a lot better than the one on the Xperia Z, but to be fair, the speaker on this phone was garbage even when it launched. And that same year, HTC launched a phone called the One M7, which had dual front-facing speakers made by Beats Audio, and that's still probably one of the best sounding phone speakers ever. Listening to headphones is hard to compare since the S21 Ultra doesn't have a headphone jack, but to be honest, I really don't think there's much to talk about anyway. The biggest improvement in music, I think, is not to do with the phones. It is that instead of having to download crappy MP3s, we now have access to music streaming services where we can play any song on demand in high quality. That is awesome, but to be fair, the Xperia Z can do that too. Battery life is another area where I don't think we've come that far. I mean, yes, the battery life on the S21 Ultra probably is a bit better, and I probably do get a couple more hours of screen on time, and things like fast charging and wireless charging have made charging your phone a lot quicker and more convenient, but it also uses a lot more power because it has so much more functionality. So when the Xperia Z was my phone, it got me through a day of use. And now the S21 Ultra is my phone, it still gets me through a day of use. Next, we have to compare how far Android has come because it too has gone over some major improvements since 2013. The Xperia Z launched with Android 4.1, also known as Jelly Bean, and would eventually be updated to 5.1, known as Lollipop. Since then, we have had both major and minor improvements. Some notable examples are as follows. Support for fingerprint readers, which naturally the S21 Ultra and almost all phones today have, whilst the Xperia Z had to make do with pin code or puzzle combinations. Support for USB-C, and really, aren't we all so glad micro USB is finally over? Split screen support for multitasking, Google Assistant, picture-in-picture -picture mode, suggested reply system for messaging apps, app permission management, and various security and privacy improvements, and many, many more things. To close out this video, I think I expected there to be less of a difference between the two devices. I mean, I understood that, of course, we've come a long way, but when I got the Xperia Z, it was brand new, and as such, most of my experiences of this phone were overwhelmingly positive. But to see it compared to a 2021 flagship, you can really tell that innovation hasn't slowed down one bit, and I don't think it's about to slow down either. Maybe in 8 years I'll do another video, but in that one it'll be the S21 Ultra getting destroyed. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like as it helps the channel out a ton. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys next time.